Today we're talking shooty dreadnoughts, and we're going to take a look at the Derrideo with the excessive amount of guns it has. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, the strategy focused 40k channel where we're all about getting the most out of our miniatures on the tabletop. In today's video we're delving back into the Imperial Armour Compendium to look at the new and revamped rule set for the Derrideo, taking a look over its datasheet, which weapons are the best to equip it with, and how I think about using it in game myself. So let's talk about this redoubtable heavy weapons platform from the Great Crusade then, and take a look at its datasheet. So here we have the current datasheet for the Derrideo Dreadnought. Its rules are found in the Imperial Armour Compendium, it's an elite's choice for Codex Space Marines, and still set you back 190 points and 1 command points due to the Martial Legacy keyword. For that hefty investment you get a sturdy walker, absolutely covered in guns. It's got a movement of 8, weapon skill and ballistic skill 3+, plus, which has gone down from previous, strength 6, toughness 7, 12 wounds, 4 attacks, leadership 8 and a 3 plus save. It's also protected by its atomantic shielding for a 5 plus invul, and duty eternal for minus 1 damage, the same as all dreadnoughts. The invul save in particular does mean it's fairly hard to take out, against dedicated anti-tank firepower it's likely to be a bit more survivable point for point than the redemptor dreadnought or say primaris gladiator tanks. In terms of armament, at base it's equipped with an ambulus autocannon battery and a twin heavy bolter. First of all, the twin heavy bolter can be swapped out for a twin heavy flamer, though I personally wouldn't. All the rest of its guns are pretty long range, and you don't really want to have to move it right up and close to the enemy, where it might be at risk of reprisals. The heavy bolters are quite nice, they can chip off a few wounds off virtually any target. Those anvilus auto cannons can be swapped out for a few different options, including arachnus heavy las cannons, a hellfire plasma carronade, and a volkite vulcanets battery. The las cannons are only really good at anti-tank, though the rest of these are all 36 inch range, and fairly good generalist profiles. The anvilus auto cannons are 36 inches, Heavy 8, Strength 7, AP-2, Damage 2, so going to be decent against anything that isn't Toughness 8 really. The Arachnus Heavy Las Cannons, you get 2 shots with them, as Strength 9, AP-3, and Damage D3 plus 3. To be honest, 2 shots is a bit disappointing for a Dreadnought of this size, but an average of 5 damage for each shot that punches through is quite nice. Obviously these are kind of rubbish against Hordes. The Hellfire Plasma Carronade, that's Heavy 6 and 36 inch range. Base profile is strength 7 at AP-3 and damage 2, though as with most plasma weapons you can supercharge it to go up to strength 8 and damage 3. You will risk some mortal wounds with that, and reroll ones aren't quite as easy to achieve as the Dreadnought isn't core, but it's still some insanely heavy firepower. Finally, the Volkite Falconet, that's 36 inch range, heavy 6, strength 8, AP-2 and damage 2. However though, if you do roll any 6s to wound, you get an additional 2 mortal wounds on the target in addition to any other normal damage. We'll look at a comparison of their damage output in just a second. Finally, you have the option to take or leave a missile launcher weapon on the top of the Dreadnought. You can take the Aeolos missile launcher, which is a 48 inch range, heavy 3d3 weapon, at strength 6, AP-1 and damage 1. That one would cost you 20 points, and in my opinion for 20 points that's really not a bad deal. You're basically getting an auto cannon's worth of damage output with the blast keyword at a very very long range. Could be pretty useful for clearing out some enemy chaff units at the back of the board. The other option is the Boreas air defense missiles. They cost 20 points as well, and they have a profile exactly the same as a single las cannon, except they get some bonuses against aircraft. If you target an aircraft with them, you get plus two to hit, and their damage characteristic changes to D3 plus three. They're a pretty good deal if you do wind up facing off against planes they're not exactly super common throughout 40k at the moment, and for me it just amounts to tacking on an extra last cannon to the platform, and for me for 20 points I'd happily take or leave it. Finally, in terms of special rules, as we mentioned it doesn't have the core keyword, so it won't be getting quite as good rerolls as things like Relic Contemptors for example. It does quite helpfully have Smokescreen though, giving you a nice reactive defensive buff if you happen to get shot, and it's got the normal Angels of Death for combat doctrines, and the normal Explodes rule. Overall, I'd describe the Derrideo Dreadnought as a pretty resilient general purpose firing platform. It's got pretty decent range, and most of its guns will be effective against whatever you point them at. Let's take a look at its main weapons now though, and see exactly which ones are best. So here we have a little bit of math hammer on the various damage output of the weapons. We're taking aim at a few common targets in the meta right now, intercessors, aggressors, and toughness 7 and 8 vehicles. These are the sort of things that the Dreadnought really quite excels at, they've got high damage shots with good strength and good AP. The amount of wounds that you can see in the table 
is how many the Derrideo Dreadnought inflicts per 100 points, and not taking the Heavy Bolters into account, which would obviously make things better. Straight up, it really doesn't paint too bright a picture for the Arachnus last cannons. They're pretty inferior even against their ideal targets such as Toughness 8 vehicles, and the Volkite Falconet and Plasma Carronade still beat them. They're also by far the least flexible, being pretty rubbish against any infantry targets with only two shots. The Anvilus Autocannons also aren't quite as much a general purpose weapon as they used to be, losing strength 8 really hurt them, and point for point they're also not the best in any category whatsoever, being particularly weak against Toughness 8 vehicles. Really, for me, I'd be looking between the Volkite Falconet and the Plasma Carronade. I think they're both 10 points very well spent, as they massively up the damage output per point. The Volkite Falconet does better against Intercessors and any hordes that are less durable than them. That 2 Mortal Wound ability really helps, and it's also the second best in every other category. Losing out only to the Plasma Carronade, which is the best against Aggressors and Toughness 7 and 8 vehicles. You do have to be prepared to overcharge though, which means that you are going to be suffering on average one mortal wound per turn, and that is a significant disadvantage over the Falconet. The Plasma Carronade does do particularly well against Aggressors and Toughness 7 vehicles though. Strength 8 and Damage 3 are pretty decent against just those targets. Overall, when loading out a Derrideo, I'd go for the Heavy Bolters, either the Falconet or the Carronade, and then think about putting the Alos Missile Launcher on top. It's by no means mandatory, though it is quite good value and looks really cool. Moving on, let's talk briefly about buffs and synergies for the Derrideo. Naturally, things are a little bit limited, as it isn't core, so it's not going to be getting any standard character rerolls. though some Space Marine chapters do have some particularly good synergy with vehicles and gun platforms. Ultramarines are pretty handy for being able to fall back and shoot, stops you getting tagged by a small unit and forced to shoot them for a turn. Imperial Fist synergize really quite well with the Dreadnought, they get extra shots with the Heavy Bolters, and all of its weapons will be getting an extra pip of damage on turn 1. Those Volkite Falconets could be very nasty, firing at flat damage 3 versus vehicles on the first turn. Ignore's cover is certainly no bad thing either. Dark Angels aren't too bad for static gun platforms. If you can deploy it well and not need to reposition, getting plus 1 to hit is really nice. Iron Hands will give you all sorts of vehicle synergies, feel no pain and slower degrading is great, and re-rolling ones innately on turn 1 could be pretty nice for that Plasma Carronade and have you not worrying about overcharging quite so much. Finally, Raven Guard or Stealthy can actually work quite well. Always counting in light cover at long range will give you a 2 plus armor save and a 5 plus invul. That's going to be a pretty sturdy combo against most attacks. In terms of characters, Tech Marines always go well with Dreadnoughts and non core vehicles. Again, that can be a way to get him hitting on plus 1. He's fairly points intensive, so it can be quite efficient. And of course, you can repair him for a few more wounds after. Stratagems wise, he is perhaps a little bit limited. Smokescreen is by far the best in my opinion, getting minus 1 to hit when your opponent tries to focus him down could be a very efficient use of a CP. You've also got Armour of Contempt for a 5 plus shrug off against mortal wounds, and potentially if he's in the middle of a core firebase, you could use Wisdom of the Ancients to affect the units nearby, though unfortunately it's not going to affect him, unlike with other core dreadnoughts. In general, I consider pairing with a Tech Marine if you've got a few other vehicles around that he could work on. Otherwise, he can just be a gun platform that doesn't need much support. So how would I think about using the Derrideo Dreadnought in-game then? Obviously, compared with quite a lot of choices in 40k, he's fairly straightforward to use. He's a gun platform. Ideally, he doesn't want to get shot first, so maybe he should be hiding out of line of sight turn 1, and then use that good movement to get some lines of sight, and draw a bead on whatever's scaring your army the most. The Plasma Carronade or the Falconet should be able to deal some decent damage against heavies, and then the Heavy Bolters and Aelos Missile Launcher, if you take it, have some really good general damage output that should put some wounds on basically any target that you need them to. He could be a reasonable choice for trying to hold down an objective back in your deployment zone, so the rest of your army could push up. Or if you are running a few vehicles, say maybe a couple of Redemptors, you could advance him up the board a bit with a Tech Marine, the Tech Marine giving them plus one to hit, and repairing any of the Dreadnoughts as needed. The Derrideo really doesn't want to be in close combat if you can avoid it, his attacks just really aren't all that strong, and you want to have the option of firing your guns wherever you want, rather than just into the melee that he happens to be in. If you can, it's well worth screening him from any opportunistic infantry or vehicles that might want to tag him in melee. When he's shot, if you think your opponent is going to focus him down with a fair few guns, then certainly considering smoke screen would be a good idea. So the question remains is if he's actually any good and worth taking over the other Space Marine gun platforms. At some point in the near future, I'm hoping to do a bit of a Math Hammer comparison with him against Contemptors and Leviathan Dreadnoughts, just to see who can put out the most damage versus certain targets. Though from a few initial calculations against things like Contemptors with Volkite Culverins, 
who are again very decent all-round damage, or the Grav Bombard Leviathan Dreadnought that we talked about last week. The Derideo Dreadnought does seem fairly balanced, maybe a bit better against some targets, a little worse against others. Compared with Contemptors and Leviathans, he's maybe a little bit more fragile point for point, though perhaps not significantly so, and his guns do have a decent range when compared with the Leviathan. So overall, I'd report that he's a solid generalist gun platform, and one that you can certainly consider for a Space Marine army should you wish to. With guns that are basically quite effective against most targets, he's always guaranteed to cause your opponent at least some problems, I think, and with good range and good damage output, he's not just a threat that it can just be ignored. I would say that in more competitive games, I suspect that he won't be quite as strong as the Redemptor. The Redemptor isn't enormously behind in terms of firepower, has the core keyword, and of course packs a colossal melee punch on top of his range damage output. Obviously though, that's a bit more of a mixed role dreadnought. He won't have the form of the Derrideo in a pure shooting contest. The Derrideo is perhaps not truly outstanding compared with other options in the Space Marine roster, but for a non-core vehicle that's a dedicated gun platform, you could do far worse. So let me know your thoughts about the Derrideo Dreadnought down in the comments below. Do you think that this guy cuts the mustard at the moment, or do you prefer the look of other options? If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics, where we'll certainly keep these tactics videos coming, with new 40k stuff out pretty much every day. If you have been enjoying my videos quite a bit recently, I would just like to mention that the channel has a Patreon page, which you can find down in the video description below. Making all these videos does take a fair amount of time, so any support you might like to offer is greatly appreciated. I do try and give channel patrons a fair few bonuses, such as early access to certain videos, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry to the channel's prize giveaways, with a chance to win some really big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support Allspets Tactics, then the link is down in the video description below. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.